Uh, today, Suresh would like to discuss the three eras of enterprise architecture and what is coming up in the new era of 3.0 and how the landscape of enterprise architecture is going to change. So uh, a warm virtual welcome for uh, Suresh. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, I hope you're all safe, uh, staying safe uh, in this uh, COVID era. Um, so today I would like to talk about the enterprise architecture in the digital age. Uh, so a little bit about my, myself, uh, I think Simon has introduced me, but uh, uh, just to give a quick overview of uh, what I did. Uh, so I've been in the industry for the past uh, 30 years and uh, provided uh, enterprise architecture consulting services uh, in various industries like finance, automotive, health, and uh, retail. Um, so some of the success stories um, that I want to share with you is uh, we brought uh, business agility uh, within the organizations by, um, uh, by enabling the business capabilities by uh, planning and uh, you know, uh, implementing those uh, business uh, capabilities in an agile uh, way. We had developed uh, some methodologies around that. And then we helped organizations to digitally transform, uh, basically by uh, architecting the digital platforms for those uh, organizations uh, using SMAC IT. I will explain that abbreviation SMAC IT. Um, and then we optimized the infrastructure uh, uh, within the organizations which brought about uh, you know, 40 to 60% savings. Uh, and also we did some application portfolio management, which is kind of correlated with that one, but uh, in some organizations we did it in a separate uh, initiative, which achieved some about 50% uh, you know, optimization in the organizations. And uh, we provided some security services to the organizations and uh, establishing the security at an enterprise level. So, <clears throat> and also we got some accolades uh, from the uh, CIO Review Magazine, we've been recognized as a top 20 companies uh, across the world, um, and then um, for, who are providing enterprise active services. And uh, we've been recognized as a you know, company of the month uh, in the July 25th, 2015 edition. Now, I would like to uh, walk you through the journey of uh, the EA, the history of the EA. Right, I would like to take you to the past and then I would like to take you to the future. Now, so again, a disclaimer here. So this is my classification uh, of the uh, history of the, the enterprise architecture. So I hope uh, for those who are in the EA space for long would agree that, but if you have any questions on this, please, please feel free to post it on the Q&A. We'll take it, uh, take it up after the, the presentation. Now, I categorize all the, uh, the EA into three categories. Uh, so EA 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, right? So uh, I think that, so I, that 1.0 started late 80s, right? Uh, so it started very low, and, and uh, you know the reasons in 90s, we were developing systems left and right, right? So there was no EA or very little EA, right? And then uh, in the, after the 2000 dot-com bubble burst, the EA adoption rate picked up rampantly, right? Um, so, um, and then uh, after the 2010s, again, it started to glow, uh, go down because uh, the technology was rampant after 2010. So we have all the latest technologies uh, like the smack it, the social media, uh, analytics, cloud computing, uh, all this stuff. And uh, we are at this uh, 2020 with the COVID, right? And uh, so with the COVID coming in, I'm guessing that again, the adoption rate of uh, EA is going to high, uh, go up uh, because we need to consolidate the systems. We need to consolidate the infrastructure. Um, again, uh, we need to optimize uh, uh, whatever we are doing, right? Uh, otherwise, probably I wouldn't say so, but uh, my guess is uh, we are going, the EA adoption rate is going to go up, right? So that's how I would like to categorize the, uh, the EA. Now, let me walk you through what happened during the EA 1.0, right? So we, it, it was all technology focused. We tried to optimize the technology, but business 
and IT were disconnected. They are all in silos, so there was no connection whatsoever between the business and the IT, right? And the development was a bit traditional, like a waterfall method and, and all that. And uh, it's all like uh, whatever the governance we have, the very little governance that we had, it is all gated, right? So we, every at every stage, uh, we used to review the projects. And uh, so it, it was uh, a very, you know, traditional uh, gated governance. So that was the, the 1.0. And one of the, the good initiatives, what I had observed, and this is uh, one of our clients uh, did this one, is to optimize the technology stack, right? Um, so uh, for each and every layer, right? Right from the hardware to the OS to the database, application servers, the data servers and security, uh, all the you know, shared services, they picked a product for each layer, and then they, they build this technology stack so that the development teams and the operation teams can use this stack, right? So when I said that optimization of the technology infrastructure, so this is one of the, uh, uh, the, the most cool thing that I have seen uh, in the industry is building this technology stack so that the organizations were able to optimize their uh, technology, um, uh, technology infrastructure. So that was the, the, one of the major initiatives that I had observed uh, during that 1.0. And uh, to be an enterprise architect, we needed mostly technology skills, technical skills, right? So we didn't need any business skills or anything else, right? So all that we had to focus uh, as an enterprise architect is to build this technology infrastructure, the technology services, right? So most predominantly, you should be an expert in the technology architecture rather than anything else, right? So that was the, the 1.0. And uh, the maturity model, if you look at uh, for 1.0 was, we used only you know, CMMI related maturity models, which are predominantly for the implementation side, right? So that was all the, the maturity we were uh, assessing at that time. Now, after that, uh, 2000, uh, sorry, again, the governance, if you take the governance, it, so it is all gated governance, and we had several gates during the process of development, right? To screen the ideas, to scope the ideas, right? To build the business case, to develop, test, and launch. So we used to have gates at every stage of the development, and uh, the, the governance process is, is a bit of lengthy process, and. Uh, you know, there, is, there used to be a lot of uh, friction between the development and the boards, and uh, you know, uh, it, it was it, it was uh, not a smooth uh, governance, I would say. Okay, but those days we were, we were just learning about enterprise architecture, right? Now came the 2.0, right? So after that 2000 uh, 2000 com bubble burst, then we got the holistic enterprise architecture, meaning we, when we started to optimize technology infrastructure in the early 2000s, we realized that unless we look from a business perspective, unless we optimize the business and align IT to the business and architect IT to align to the business, we cannot achieve much benefit, right? So with that, uh, thought process, so we got the holistic enterprise architecture uh, in place, and by mid thousands we got that concept um, in, in concrete, and then business started to engage EA a bit more, uh, so there was uh, some kind of alignment between the business and the IT, and uh, there was some agile development also going on parallelly. There was some waterfall development, but in parallel, there was some agile development also, and the governance was a little bit collaborative than like gated before, right? So it was, uh, you know, um, so there was a feedback mechanism from the implementation teams also. So it's a bit of collaborative governance uh, rather than um, uh, a traditional uh, governance, I would say. And uh, we started, so by mid-2010s, mid I would say, uh, 2010 onwards, I would say, like so, we started to get the digital transformation, kicking off the new technologies coming in, 
um, right? Uh, so the uh, the cloud computing and, and all this, and the FinTech uh, started to transform a little bit more. Uh, so we, we got that transformations going on uh, in the mid cycle of the 2.0, like uh, from, you know, 2010 somewhat, right? And uh, for this, the skills needed for to be an enterprise architect are so we needed some soft skills, generic skills, right? Uh, how do we, you know, the lead of leadership skills, written uh, uh, or communication skills. So all the soft skills were needed, and then the business skills also was were needed to build the business case, uh, strategic planning, um, etc. And then enterprise architectural skills like uh, you know building block design, uh, modeling, right? Uh, so, uh, and then program project management skills, uh, where we have to, you know, manage the teams, all right, so, and establish the programs to manage the projects, and some general uh, IT general knowledge skills, right, technical skills, technical, technical IT skills, right, for the technology infrastructure and all, legal for, uh, you know, uh, for the, um, uh, the laws and regulations and, and all that. So, it, so the, the enterprise architect uh, needs to be a kind of a jack of all uh, kind of a, uh, you know, a person uh, to do enterprise architecture uh, during that uh, 2000 to 2020, right? So that was uh, the, the, the transformation of an enterprise architect. And then to do that, uh, the maturity, we had to assess the maturity, we use the ACMM, which is from the US Department of Commerce. Um, so this is the maturity model. There are six levels of maturity. Uh, so uh, and then we use these nine elements uh, for the uh, for the for assessing the maturity of the uh, the organizations. So the architecture process. So how well the processes are being defined for the architecture, and then uh, how how well the architecture development is is done within the organization, and uh, how well the business is linked to the enterprise architecture. Right. Uh, and the senior management involved, like how much, uh, you know, uh, we got the buy-in from the senior, senior management, how much the business units are participating, right? How well we are communicating to the, uh, to the whole organization on the EA aspects, right, artifacts, or how much uh, EA education is done across the enterprise. And uh, security is from an IT perspective here. So how well the IT is, is you know, integrated with the enterprise architecture, and then the architecture governance, so how well we are governing, uh, what are the, are we, have we established the governance processes or not? And then the IT investment, how well the enterprise architecture is involved in the IT investment and acquisition study. So those are the nine elements uh, that we considered to assess the maturity of the organization uh, back then, right? And uh, I, I, I see that there is a two schools of thought during this period. One went on, in the traditional path where they still continued the, the waterfall kind of development. But what uh, many organizations did was they reduced the quality gates, the governance gates, right? So instead of having five or six gates, now we have only three gates. Like, uh, so the governance uh, was made a bit easy, a uh, bit more collaborative, right? Uh, so that was the change I have seen in, in some organizations. And some of missions uh, went agile, right? So it is all agile development, uh, incremental development, and uh, the governance was probably uh, very less or even zero, I would say, right? And, and one of the drawbacks that I seen in, in these two schools of thought was these organizations, so those who picked the traditional development path, they were developing all the applications and the same methodology using the same methodology, a, either traditional or agile, right? So those who picked the agile, they were developing all the, uh, the, uh, the systems or the uh, IT development uh, on the agile development, right? So, which is dangerous, which is not very good. I will explain why in a minute when we get into the 3.0, right? And uh, so it was all, uh, so it, it was big agile governance, right? So forecasting and budget was uh, done dynamically, and the measurements, uh, the, it, it was all portfolio level uh, measure metrics and measurements. And it, uh, the, the compliance is also, it's all coordinated uh, between the teams and it's a continuous process, right? Now coming to the 3.0, now this is uh, 
one of the uh, the uh, Harvard uh, professor has come up with this. Uh, the this is that these are the transformations more from a business perspective, right? So they categorize the tra transformations into three categories, which I like. Uh, so one is operational, and the second one is the operational model, and the third one is uh, strategy. Operational means so you are trying to bring operational efficiency. You are trying to make things faster, better, cheaper, right? Using the new technologies, so whatever the new technologies that we have, the SMAC IT, so which I will talk away again in a minute. And uh, so that was that. Just that. Uh, so bringing that operational efficiency is the first uh, the, uh, the transformation. And the second transformation, which is the operational model itself, meaning doing something fundamentally in a different way, like Netflix, right? Uh, being moving away from distributing the DVDs to streaming online, right? So they use the new technologies, but also they change the business model. So that is the second operational model. And the third one is, you are completely changing the essence of the company it means you are uh, you know um, crossing the boundaries of the business domains right so like uh, uh, you know um, uh, amazon uh, going from retail to cloud computing or uh, google uh, from advertising to uh, the other areas right um, so uh, so the the companies have crossed the boundaries they they were into multiple businesses and uh, they were changing the whole essence of the, the company itself, right? They're, they're completely transforming from a technology perspective as well as from a business perspective. So they come, they're coming up with a completely new direction on how the organization should work, right? So now all the digital technologies that, that we can put in, so this is where, where only using the digital technologies is operational, but if, our, if you are changing the business model also, then you are into the operation model. But if you are changing the whole way that you are doing the business itself, will be strategy. Okay. Now, I so uh, in the book uh, Design for Digital, uh, Digital Gene Ross uh, and the co-authors came up with these five uh, building blocks to uh, digitally transform any organization. So first one is uh, you need to have a shared customer insights, right? Unless you have the uh, understanding of the customer needs, right? You cannot transform. So you so you can use any technologies like big data or whatever to get the uh, our social media to get the information from the customers, analyze it. So you need to have an understanding of what the customer needs, right? And you need to build a digital platform again using the smack it right uh, social media, uh, mobility analytics, cloud computing, and the Internet of Things. Right? So you need to build a platform uh, so that the information can go from various platforms from one platform to another, how you can make sense out of that information and how you can come up with some new business models or you know, uh, how you can transform your business. And then you need an accountability framework, right? Who owns what? Who owns what components, what, you know, what business units are. So there should be an accountable framework so that uh, you, you have an understanding of you know who owns what, and and the whole organization should operate in a collaborative way rather than you know uh, fighting for each other. And then uh, those organizations who kind of expose their you know digital uh, platform um, uh, functionality, like uh, you know Apple uh, exposing the their platform to the developers so that they can build their you know apps on top of their platform, right? So those organizations excel. Uh, during this, uh, you know, digital transformation, and then to to operate all this, we need an operational backbone where uh, you build, you identify your core systems, your data, your um, um, your systems to operate efficiently, right? So these are the so I kind of agree to this, uh, you know, five building blocks that we need to digitally transform any organization. And uh, so I've been talking about this, uh, uh, you know, smack it uh, concept, right? So how you can take the uh, information from the social media, right? Uh, how you can analyze this, uh, that information using big data uh, or any analytics methods, and how you can use the, uh, the potential of the cloud computing to analyze that one, and how you can get the information from the sensors like, uh, you know, 
uh, internet of things like you know sensors or any any kind of equipment right even using the mobile technologies and all so this market uh, is is uh, is is becomes the backbone of this uh, digital transformation right and uh, within the open group i don't know if you are familiar with uh, we have a, a forum called open platform wherein uh, we are trying to come up with a, a specifications on how these various platforms can exchange the information and uh, how we can make sense out of that information and how we can transform our organizations right uh, so those who want to uh, look into that uh, open platform you can look into that so uh, basically the open platform or this market which is an extension uh, the open, open platform is an extension of that uh, market is transforming various industries right so you can take any industry uh, retail or uh, you know agriculture transportation healthcare right so you take any industry uh, this market or the open platform the digital platform is kind of uh, um, transforming the organizations within any organization right and uh, to build this um, uh, what what do we need right so i took the skill set uh, that we needed uh, earlier but i kind of expanded that a little bit so now the business skills that we need uh, is uh, should be cross domain cross industry because as you have seen, any strategic coordination is crossing the boundaries of the, the organization. And then uh, we need to have that uh, smack it uh, kind of skills to do that. And uh, moreover, in this uh, you know, post-COVID era, right, we need to embed ethical skills within the organizations, right? So having you know, justice, service, community, right? Uh, so these are the things that uh, we need to embed within the employees of any organization or within the citizens of any country as well, right? And uh, this is the maturity model. I took the same maturity ACMM, uh, but uh, so okay, actually Terry and I am coming up with some maturity model which is in work in progress. So instead of business linkage, I would say it should be business technology. Why? Because technology should be part and parcel of the business. Now you can't think of technology outside the business or you can think, think of business outside the technology. That, that should be one and the same. And uh, that is going to happen. And then uh, the enterprise security, uh, so instead of IT security, I kind of made it generic so that uh, you, know, you can look into all the security aspects rather than just the IT security. And also I, enterprise investment and acquisition strategy should be, uh, so that I made it a bit more generic. And these are the quality attributes for any architecture. You should have, those architectures should be fit for decision making, right? So it should be agile, interoperable, so the usable, secure, and open. So these are the qualities uh, that we are, uh, uh, you know, Terry and I am thinking of for any architecture uh, to have this uh, quality. Now coming to the governance model, I kind of lean to the bi-modal uh, governance model because all the projects cannot be implemented either traditionally or in agile way. So you should have both the things going on, right? So some has to go through the traditional development methodology and some has to be agile, right? So that, that is what, so a bi-modal uh, governance model helps the organizations to transform a bit more uh, you know, uh, uh, in a faster way, right? So uh, those uh, initiatives, which are long-term, which impacts many business units, if you are building something core to the organization, those have to go through a traditional development and some innovative projects where you don't know the requirements that uh, you know that clearly. So if you want to get the feedback from the, the business units, then you have to you can go through the agile method. And uh, so uh, again, the organizations has to be agile end to end, right? So uh, I, again, we have we are agile in one or two, right? So maybe in the development and the operations with the DevOps, but the agility should come from the architecture, from, from come from the planning itself, right? So agility, I think, should be end to end. Now, having said all this, right? So, especially when, when we are developing new technologies, we have to make sure that the new technologies are built in such a way that that are beneficial to the uh, the society, right? So now there are some ethical frameworks within the industry, especially for AI, because uh, when you take AI, when you are Training the systems, right? If in, in a good way, they, they, they act in a good way. 
If you are training them in a bad way, they act in a bad way, right? So we should take the responsibility of building the systems in a good way, right? So I think, so these are the principles that we need to follow. Beneficence means, now what is the benefit? What is that the, the, the benefit to the society, right? And what harm, what not harm should, should we do, right? So we should avoid the harm, right? And uh, it should be autonomous, right? And then um, give justice to the, to the whole society. And how, so we, we should take the, um, uh, uh, the um, accountability for what we are uh, doing, right? So these are the ethical, uh, you know, uh, uh, the principles that we need to follow when developing the digital transformation, uh, digital uh, technologies. And Australian government has come up with some principles and uh, same, uh, the Singapore government also, they had come up with some principles which are pretty much the same. You should be human centric, right? You should be transparent. You should do something good rather than doing anything harm. And Singapore government, well, went to an extent uh, and they, they gave some guidance on when humans should interact with these uh, AI systems, right? When they should be out, right? If the probability of harm and the severity are both low, here you can, humans can be out of the loop, but if both are severe, humans, can, should be uh, in, in, in the loop. Uh, and then um, if it is, uh, you know, low severity or, uh, you know, low probability and all, so then humans can be over the loop, meaning they have to define like when you, you have to intervene or when you can pull off uh, out of that, uh, you know, the decision making process or whatever it is, right? And then, um, so you know, Singapore also came up with a governance framework uh, that helps the organizations uh, to build uh, the systems in a, in a better way, right? And uh, even IEEE, you can check, uh, there are some standards how we can develop uh, systems in an ethical uh, manner, which are beneficial to the, the, the whole uh, the society as such. So here are some takeaways. So enterprise architecture has evolved from technology to strategic. So we, we started with the technology, right? And uh, the, so um, now we are just uh, strategic. Now you can see that the cycle has, has changed. So the cycle is kind of, you know, uh, we are getting into the cycle again. So we, so we were at probably 1.0 where we started uh, at the 2.0. But so the, the initiatives that happened in the 2.0, early 2.0, when uh, enterprises uh, started to optimize the uh, technology infrastructure, that was a big disaster. So we were not able to achieve the, uh, the optimization that, that we wanted, but hopefully in this cycle, at least we, we do some better things and the, the business leaders can take better decisions to optimize uh, the technology. Um, that, are, that is beneficial to the organization as well as to the society. And build the digital transformation building blocks. So in whatever way you want, right? In whatever order you want, you can build those five building blocks. And uh, we need to always balance between the standardization and innovation, right? So you cannot go extreme for any, uh, for towards anything, which will be a, a disaster again. And uh, you need a different set of skills. As I said, uh, in the coming era, we need uh, uh, you know, cross domain, cross industry skills to be an enterprise architect. And uh, you have to choose the right method for development. As I said, you have to choose the, uh, right uh, development methodology for right products, right, uh, projects. And then use the technology for the benefit of society. And also you can embed ethical, you should embed ethical values within the enterprises, within the citizens of the enterprise, okay? So I'm, I'm thinking that I went a little bit overboard, uh, but uh, so that's what uh, my, the, that's my presentation. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or, uh, you know, you can, um, I'll post the questions uh, in the Q&A. We will take up uh, those questions now.